Jenny. I'm really glad to make um, this presentation before you. I would like to um, get this started by asking you this question. What are you into these days? Movies? Books? English. Traveling? Mm -hmm. English? Tai Chi? Mm -hmm. Or dancing? <laughs> <laughs> types of uh, manias, buffs, uh, buffs, fanatics. Learning English in Korea is really big, and many Koreans are uh, crazy about learning English. So I chose the topic associated with this. So we'll uh, see the video first, and then talk about it more. Korea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although Korean 
students don't gather together in a square to practice our English, but our passion for learning it is not so much different. Uh, we spend a fortune on everything from CDs, MP3 files, online and offline lectures, and other internet content to English language institutes, private tutors, and trips abroad to give ourselves the best shot at learning to speak English fluently. Many Koreans will stop at nothing to learn um, speak English fluently because it has become critical to professional success. Mm, high English proficiency test scores and a good command of English uh, give candidates the upper hand in the ruthless competition for well-paid and secure jobs. And once you have a job, a good command of English puts your career on the fast track, while a poor command uh, may hold back your career advancement. Uh, as business become increasingly involved in international trade, uh, being able to speak it fluently um, has become, I mean, gives a distinct edge in the red race and has become one way to gain social status. Uh, and according to Jay Walker, English is becoming the language of problem solving and it represents a better future. Uh, it represents a hope for a better future. A uh, future where the world has a common language to uh, solve our common problems. Mm, but here I would like to uh, raise three questions. Uh, is English only a solution? Can other languages like uh, French or Chinese be a replacement? Uh, at this point, no. English is the most sort of widely spoken language throughout the world. Even in China, English became maybe the second uh, widely spoken language. So not because we love English culture, but because of people all over the world speak this language. That's why. And also, the Chinese language itself is too different for even for not only non Chinese, but also Chinese themselves to, to have a good command of the, the language. So still, I think English is here to stay for the next century. Mm -hmm. I think. Are you sure? Yes, my Tai Chi say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chinese is a big contender in the next five, ten years. Yeah. What do you girls think? I think um, English is not um, only language to solve world global oh. problems. Mm -hmm. It's the best language nowadays. Would you prefer to study French? <laughs> <laughs> I also study Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, English is the worldwide popular language. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, don't, I don't came up with other language to solve problems. Mm -hmm. everyone. My second question is, uh, what if the language itself is not an issue, but the people involved in, in global problems? Uh, would you on them? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we don't have much uh, communication problems mm -hmm. when leaders uh, come together, get together. Uh, but what if, well, some countries are kind of um, unwilling to take part, part in um, some cooperation or uh, actions that should be taken? Uh, as to climate change, yeah. participation level, uh, enthusiasm of all the players are really different. Say, uh, players from the USA, Canada, and the European nations are willing to take part in this whole uh, climate the, the greenhouse gas reduction project. On the other, on the other end, India and China are less willing to join this, this movement compared to this uh, what the other West country members. This, here, I think the language is not the issue. The, the intent or the situation where those countries are situated, situated may produce different response to the same problem. I don't know. I'm Canadian. 
Canada's not doing very well on that. <laughs> so, I'm surprised. Uh, what's your take on this, ladies? Maybe can you clarify the question a little more pointedly? Uh, so okay. what if there's a problem that the English can't solve? Yeah, what if the, um, for example, what about the um, um, oppression of women in Middle East? Can English, uh, can the language English uh, solve it? Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> um, yeah, that's really okay. Um, okay, then maybe we can move to the last question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your suggestion for that's the, the question, question you pose? Uh, well, actually, I myself failed to find the solution. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to uh, get your opinions. Yeah, yeah, that brings up a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Shall we move to the last question? Sure. Yeah. Since we're running out of time. Uh, can yeah. everyone afford to learn English? Like the kids in war torn areas or uh, kids in the starving zones or the um, people from the underprivileged people, uh, underprivileged, uh, I mean, the underprivileged people. Very easy question, but also very different question. Right. Yeah.